Mike Schmidt has joined Mickey Mantle in seventh place on the all-time home run chart. His solo home run off Dwight Gooden helped Philadelphia score a 3-1 win over the Mets. Willie McGee and Tony Pena each drove in two, helping the Cardinals snap a six-game losing streak 7-3 at Pittsburgh. Chicago top Montreal while the Reds' Danny Jackson blanked the Giants. In the American former giant, Chili Davis hammered an eighth-inning homer in California, ended Kansas City's six-game win streak 9-7. Well, Bob Nepper on the mound. It's been a tough week for Bob Nepper and those he likes to talk about. Enough said. Here, Nepper gets Albert Hall looking at the curveball. Nepper goes six in the third, struck out five. Top of the fourth, Glenn Davis on first. Kevin Bass takes Mailer deep to right field. Dale Murphy back after it, but runs out of real estate. It's gone. Home run number five, and it's 3 nothing Astros. Top of the sixth, Astros looking to expand a 3-2 lead. Walling hits this one to left center. Albert Hall after it, a great two for the Astros. But the Braves tied in the seventh. Ron Gant takes this one deep to center field. Gerald Young goes after it, but can't get to it. It's off the wall. Looks like it was gone. Ron Renneke scores a tying run, and then it's 3-3 when Dale Murphy gets all of this Ossenmacher pitch into the upper deck in right field, and the Braves win it 4-3. Suter picks up his 10th save of the year. That was the 10th home run. Now, game two. Russ Nixon, well, one of the things he did as soon as he came on was made Charlie Paleo a starter, took him out of the bullpen. Maybe he wants to put him back after this. Top of the third inning, leading 3-1. Gwen Davis had already singled in a run, smashes a curveball deep to center and gone. Albert Hall left, leaped uh, for it, but that was way too late for that. Bottom of the ninth now, Braves come back. Five straight singles, including this one by Ozzie Virgil off the lever. Dave Smith, Gerald Perry scores. Braves tied up at 5-5. Those never say die Atlanta Braves send Dale Murphy up again. He lashes the single through the drawn and infield. Ken Griffey trots home with the winner, but also interesting action going on in Cincinnati. The Reds and the Giants. Happy birthday, Davey Concepcion. Well, he got a present. We'll tell you about that in a minute. Bottom of the first inning, Atley Hammaker plumps Eric Davis. That hurt a lot. Davis had to leave the game. He's undergone x-rays at a hospital. We'll let you know how those x-rays turned out. Uh, that information's not in yet. Reds jump on top, 2-0, and they press for more. Barry Larkin singles to right field. Maldonado comes up throwing to second base. McGriff holds at third, and then they get Larkin in the rundown. Jose Uribe throws home, but the ball is knocked out of Curtin and Waring's uh, hands. Great play right there. Still in the fourth inning. Cal Daniel Singato is going to come home gunning. Chris Sabo, watch the slide. Perfect. Comes sliding around the side. I wonder if you might have learned that from Pete Rose done in spring training. It looked like it, didn't it? 6-0. The Reds win it. Danny Jackson with the five-hitter. Into the way back machine we go to last Saturday. Same two teams, Giants and the Reds. Giants place. Concepcion and the Reds beeping about a strike call. He says the magic word until he's gone. <coughs> Excuse me. But as he leaves... He manicured the grounds just a little bit. You'll see him as he walks by the first base, the first base bag, and he says, get that thing out of here. Well, that's a costly toss. Concepcion suspended. Casey looking for their seventh straight. The Angels, meanwhile, looking to get out of the cellar in the West. Head power up 4-1 early, but he can't hold on it. In the third, Tony Armas makes it 5-4 Angels. They come take a lead of 6-5 when Bob Boone lays down the suicide sweep. He went 5-5. Five for five. Royals come back, tie the game at seven, and then Chili Davis in the eighth, the leadoff homer of Gene Garber, and that does it so much for the Royals' six-game winning streak. The Angels beat them at KC. California trying to crawl out of that cellar in the West. More on the Royals a little bit later in the show, but let's move along to some other scores. Tim Laudner's bases loaded double is the game-winning RBI for the Twins. Frank Viola wins his tenth, and Jeffrey Leonard. Leads Milwaukee over Chicago. The Hackman hits his first American League home run. Celebrated with the one flap down Trotton. His next time at the bat, Bill Long. And the White Sox plunked him. Next stop tonight is Cleveland for the Indians. And wing to hold on to first place in the East. Well, the Tribe has been slipping as of late. But they've got to be thinking if they sweep the Yanks this weekend, they're tied for first come Monday. Over 56,000 on hand in Cleveland for this one. Top of the second. Two on, two outs. Rafael Santana hits a grounder to Julio Franco by him. Claude, uh, Corey Snyder then boots it. Claude L. Washington scores, but Snyder comes up and guns down Wayne Collison. Ends the inning, but yanks up 1-0. In the fourth inning, Ron Kittle at the plate. His second solo blast of the night of John Candelaria. The Indians have the lead. Corey Snyder's next. And it was costly because he sends this to center field over top of Claudel Washington's head, bounces into the seat, ground rule double, Joe Carter scores 3-1 to one for the strike. Neil Allen on in relief, Mel Hall with a pinch and single, up the middle, Brooks Jacoby. Turn on the defense, Julio Franco, 
Covering a lot of ground, Rob Wayne Tollison of the extra base hit. And the Yanks, meanwhile, just cannot come up and make the plays. Rafael Santana and Tollison then blow the routine double play. This sparks a four-run inning for Cleveland. Remains in front until Fred Lynn in the bottom of the sixth. Dennis Oil Camboy serves it up and springs the leak as this one goes about 400 feet. Ties the ball game at two. Then in the extra inning, bottom of the 11th, Eddie Murray on first off and yes, dealing second. The ball gets away and Murray goes to third. He is the, the winning run. All we need is for Jim Traber to hit a top fly something. Well, this one is over everybody's head. They were drawn in for the play at the plate. It's a single and Murray scores, trots home and the O oh, children. Then Ron Gant bloops one. That's it for Mr. Childress, who was rocked. Bring on Juan Augusto, first guy he faces. Ken Oberfell loops one into right. That is three straight singles. That brings on this base hit by Gerald Perry. Still, everybody's hitting the ball. Bring on Dave Smith. Ken Griffey gets one in and scores a run. It's five to four. Ozzie Virgil then scoots one through. Five straight hits. It's tied up. Bring up the Murph with one out, and he does it again. Sends it out there. Griffey scores, and the Braves come up with the comeback of the year right now, down 5-1 in the ninth, and they pull it out 6-5. to five. Him For the night cap, that went within minutes of the curfew. Could have ended here in the 13th when Dave Parker hits it out of the reach of Ruben Sierra, but Sierra comes back, hits the relay man perfectly, and Jeff Uncle throws a strike that nails Dave Henderson at the plate game still tied at six. Now, just shy of that 1 a.m. curfew, Dale Mahorchik gives up this bloop double to Stan Javier. Matt Sinatra wheels home. Oakland wins it seven to six in 14 innings to snap their four game losing streak, keep their lead at five in the West. And they also got the major league leading 17th home run from Jose Canseco. West Coast, but the American League's 1 a.m. local time curfew was avoided when it finally, or when it was finally decided, I, rather, in 14 innings. Let's pick it up. Usually Dennis Eckersley a lot to protect the lead, but with one on in the eighth, Gino Petrelli cranks one. Deep to right field, and that line drive is gone. Pinch hit, two-run homer. First homer given up by Eckersley this year, and the Rangers took the lead 6-5. Bottom of the eighth, the Cobra, Dave Parker, takes Mitch Williams the other way in the left for the base hit. Dave Henderson will score it to 6-6 six, six tie, and we go to extra innings. Boy, do we. Bottom 13th. Dave Henderson on first, and Parker gets all of this one. Takes Dale Mahorsik deep. Ruben Sierra can't get come up with it. Here comes Henderson. Sierra to Jeff Kukul to Gino Petrelli. Here comes the relay throw to the plate. Henderson's a dead duck. Get out of here. Bottom of the 14th, though. Stan Javier lines one to left center. Bob Brower can't get... Barry Bond comes flying into your picture to rob the Cardinals, but on the Astro turf, that can burn, Barry. He paid the price. Next to Leo the Lift. Normally the umpire, the victim in exchanges with managers. Watch what happens when two Italians battling for the lead in the AL West get together. Bobby Valentine turns his back on Tony La Russa. La Russa didn't like it. They exchanged barbs, and I don't believe they were talking about their family. Eventually order restored as the men in blue come to the rescue. Maybe this is why it took nearly four hours for this game to get finished. Then the crowd pleasers. You wonder how these baseball major leaguers can stomach that tobacco. Barry Lyons shows the secret. It's the bubblegum wrap. Damon Berryhill getting the best of the umpire but couldn't get to this ball off the Expos, trapped it off the wall but made the ump pay the price. John Candelaria with an unusual delivery against Cleveland, done one better by Oakland's Eric Plunk, who plunked the ball 25 feet from home. This is a foul ball. A pigeon victimized in Detroit as the Tigers take on Toronto with a little help from the air. And next to our Sultan of Swat, you saw John Candelaria's earlier delivery. He was better off than this one. Ron Kittle with his second two run, two home run game of the week. Kittle cashing in against his former team and also a curtain call of more than 60,000 in Cleveland as Cleveland took care of the Yankees, pull within two. Not all the work in the field was brilliant. Glenn Hubbard finding some nuances in that Oakland infield. Gary Pettis 
thinking he has a beat on this fly ball, going the wrong way. And finally, Wade Boggs, who earlier had that home run taken away, finding that Joe Orslock doesn't know the Baltimore outfield as well as Fred Lynn Boggs, by the way, is now within a percentage point of Dave Winfield's Major League leading 357 batting average. Dennis Rasmussen on the mound. Stakes to a 2-1 lead early, but he serves it up, and John Shelby gives it a ride. Solo blast, T-bone shot, ties the game at two. Lead for Joe McGrain to work with, and the fifth Cardinals put another man on for Willie McGee, who laid into a Mike Dunn pitch. Bottom of the seventh with a man aboard, and Chet Lemon gets a hold of this David Wells pitch and takes it out the left. It's a fastball, and it's history in two ways. It's out of the ballpark, and it ends a string of 111 at-bats without a home run for Schmidt. And it's number 536, tying him with Mickey Mantle for 7th on the all-time list, and also with Joe DiMaggio for 24th on the all-time RBI list. A ticket of baseball, there was a lot happening, of course, but one play sticks out. It happened when the Orioles and Red Sox played in Baltimore. So let's go back to Memorial Stadium and watch Wade Boggs tee off on Jay Tibbs. But look at Orioles center fielder Fred Lynn going to action. You gotta love it, unless you're Boggs and the Red Sox, because look again. Boggs hits a deep, towering drive. Lynn with time. An experienced knows he's got time to draw a bead while he heads for the warning track. Then, will it ever come down? He makes the leap. The grab comes crashing to earth to turn a home run into an out and make the play of the day.